get started. Who are our pollinators? There's a variety of them. There's butterflies, there's bees, there's moths, <clears throat> there's beetles, there's flies and birds. And they all pollinate at different levels of from ground up into the trees, um, from wet to dry, from all different shaped flowers, all different size flowers, and uh, different times of the day and night. The first one, bees. Bees are the uh, most prevalent pollinator and they live in the ground or they live in hives or they live inside trees or dead roots. Um, they definitely need a water source. Um, when we did a, uh, a few years ago, we installed a bee garden for a, um, a customer over in New London and he had several um, bird baths for the bees and they used them and all day when we were there they were on these bird baths and they were drinking um, so you gotta have a water source and uh, the bees um, they all there's there's different sizes there's little tiny bees up to really big bees and they all have different size tongue lengths so that that uh, determines that tongue length determines what type of flower they pollinate. So they, they pollinate a variety of different kinds of types and shapes of flowers. Butterflies. Butterflies, um, they are a specific type of pollinator. They need, a, they need a plant or a flower that has a landing pad on it. They need something where their wings won't get uh, tussled up in the flowers or the, the flower petals. So they need a flower that's open like this so they can <coughs> land on it without getting hurt. Um, they also need protection from wind because the wind can really do damage to their wings. Um, they also need drinking water and they need puddles to, they sip the mud and they get the, the minerals out of the mud. So they need a, a water source as far as clean water and a mud source to get their, get their minerals. They also need, um, either bare ground or flat rocks where they can come and bask and soak up the sun and get warm. Um, and usually the darker the rock, the better. So in my yard, I have a couple of large um, river stones, black river stones just set in certain areas around the garden that they come and they sit on and it just gets them warm. Butterflies are also attracted to bright, bright colored flowers and scented flowers along with those landing platforms that I was talking about. Moths. Moths are the uh, pollinators that usually, uh, they're active at night and they, they go after plants or flowers that are usually white or off-white in color and very highly scented. So they're attracted to any of the plants that open up, any of the flowers that open up in the late afternoon or during the night. Beetles. Beetles are a, um, a uh, what do I want to say? Not the most efficient pollinator. Uh, they end up dropping a lot of the pollen. They usually use the pollen to eat, but they end up dropping a lot of it because they they don't have um, the kind of the correct uh, anatomy to hold on to that pollen like a bee does. Um, they go after plants that usually have very large flowers and um, strongly scented flowers and with their sexual organs, with the, the plant's uh, sexual organs exposed, that means the anthers and the pistils, they're, uh, they're larger than usual and those are the plants that they go after. And an example of that would be a magnolia. Magnolia is a very big flower with very large stamens and, um, and pistils. Flies. <clears throat> Flies are, are what's considered a generalist pollinator, and they tend to go after small flowers um, in shady, moist areas, and they go after flowers that stink, <laughs> that smell like uh, rotting meat or something rotting. That's what they go after. So an example of that would be skunk cabbage, um, Queen Anne's lace, uh, goldenrod, pawpaw, not sweet smelling, and and 
they, they, they go after that, that ac acrid smelling plant. Birds. The hummingbird is the chief bird pollinator in our area. And uh, what's cool about hummingbirds, they can see the color red where bees cannot. And the hummingbirds prefer bright uh, tubular shaped flowers because they have a very long tongue. And they use that tongue to go all the way down to the base of the flower to get the nectar um, at the base of the flower. And when they pollinate, the pollen is carried on their bill and on their feathers because they can sometimes fit into a whole flower. So they get in there from one flower to the next and they, they pollinate the flowers that way. There's another pollinator that's not on this list, um, but bats are also pollinators and they have to have really big flowers. Um, I mean, really big flowers. So we, we don't have too many huge flowers in this area. So down in uh, the tropics, the bat is a, a very good pollinator for the, the types of flowers that they have down there. So I'm gonna go through a list of some plants and this is only a very tiny list and I'll try to remember some more plants as I go through it um, as far as from um, recollection of uh, different gardens that we've put in um, that I see um, most of the pollinators on and I'll let you know that. Um, I also wanted to show you my little bee <laughs> and my hummingbird Aww. just as a sample and then ladybug to remind you. Um, one thing about bees, a lot of people see bees and they go, oh, it's a bee. Um, I can't tell you how many customers we run across and when we start digging in their, in their grounds, we find them underneath uh, dwarf Alberta spruces and in the ground and they want us to kill them and I won't kill them. And they get mad at me, but I won't kill them. I'll try to move them if we can. But there's some of them are little tiny little things. You wouldn't even think that they're a bee, but they're a bee. But they're all, they're all precious. And uh, we need to take care of them because we're losing them. And I don't care whether they're this big or this big, we need to, we really need to take care of the bees um, and, and try to um, be aware that they do live in the ground and most of the ground dwelling bees, they don't sting, they don't bite. Um, it's just that they're kind of a nuisance and, and just people get scared. But if we can educate people to tell them that they won't bite you, just kind of walk past them and they'll be fine. Um, please, please do that. It's very important. This first one, bugleweed, no matter what cultivar of bugleweed you have, the bees love this. Um, the, I have, I have chocolate chip in my yard and I plant this a lot and the flowers were only this big, but when the flowers come out, there's bees all over them. The little flowers were just kind of dancing with the, with the bees all over them. So this is a great bee plant and it only gets with the flower, it's maybe about that tall. It's a great ground cover. There's some bugle weeds that are more aggressive than others. Chocolate chip tends to be a clumper and just gets larger as a clump and it has very tiny leaves on it and it's a it's a very tame um, bugleweed that's why I like to use it. Is it a full sun? Yeah. It's a full sun plant. Um, sometimes I push it and I, I put it into the shade too and it does fine so it can, it's one of those plants that can go full sun full sun with more moisture less sun and it can be drier. Blueberries uh, this is a great bee plant mainly a bee plant um, and there's all kinds of blueberries as I have mentioned before from from ground cover ones that only get this big to full-size shrub ones that get this big but usually the shrubs are just full uh, with bell-shaped white flowers that the bee gets up into and then it's it's like ringing the bell and they're they're, they're having a great time inside the flower so uh, blueberries are outstanding for bees. Iris this is a um, a bee and a fly uh, uh, plant and this is dwarf crested iris this is the iris that only gets about this big and it looks like it looks like someone took a full-size iris and just squished it down and and what's nice about this is spreads mm -hmm. this is a great ground cover um, and the flowers are only about this tall and it comes purple or it comes all white um, 
but the the bees and the um, flies like this one geraniums there's hundreds of different kinds of geraniums and this is a, a bee mainly a bee plant and uh, with geraniums the flowers can be anywhere from like this to like this and um, this this mainly blooms start blooming in june and some of them bloom throughout the season until frost so they they help feed the bees throughout the whole season how tall is this one here this one here pink penny pink penny maybe with the flowers it's about that tall there's some geraniums that get about this tall there's other ones that only stay about this tall so they're all different sizes time um, this is a another nice ground cover it comes in pink and white and purple and uh, with the flower it's maybe about that tall it smells wonderful you can put it in your pathway so you can step on it, it doesn't hurt it uh, but the bees love it it's another great bee plant makes white flowers pardon makes white flowers white flowers pink flowers purple flowers it depends on which cultivar there's some that there's some more times that, that just get that tall and there's some little tiny really tiny times. It's a very tiny leaf and it has a very great leaf. It's white and green. Yeah, there's a white and green one. There's a yellow and green one. There's all kinds. There's all kinds. But it's a spreader and it needs full sun, dry soil. Thyme, the experience I've had with thyme, it has to be in dry soil. If it's in wet soil, it just rots and it doesn't do well. It has to have dry pretty much infertile soil and um, in the spring when the flowers are just starting to come out it'll look like part of it's dead from um, the winter time and and all I do is I just cut the dead off and go back to where it's still alive and it comes back no problem. Ebom. This is a, um, a butterfly and a hummingbird plant and bees too. And uh, again, this is the type of plant that they have little dwarf ones that grow this tall, or they have ones that grow up to four or five feet. Um, this is a self-sower. Uh, this will throw itself all over your yard. Um, but we did hear there were some last week that don't. <laughs> um, but um, it's, easy, it's easy to pull out if you don't want it in a certain place in your yard. But the... Um, the hummingbirds and the uh, butterflies and the bees love this plant. And there's pinks and whites and purples, all colors. Black-eyed Susans. Um, there's a variety of different cultivars of black-eyed Susans. This is a great um, bee plant, bird plant, not a hummingbird plant, but a, um, um, I'm gonna say like the goldfinches in the fall. The goldfinches in the fall like to sit on the, the composite flowers like the cone flowers and the, the black-eyed Susans and pick the seeds right out of the center of the flower. Um, but mainly uh, bees and for pollinating bees, maybe some flies, but mostly bees. <clears throat> and usually um, black-eyed Susans like a dry soil and they, they're another one that can go from full sun into part shade. And um, depending on the cultivar, will throw itself all over your yard. Um, I actually, probably about four or five years ago, went through the yard and pulled out a lot of Black Eyed Susan because it was just all over the place. And um, it, that's what it does. Blazing Star. This is, um, this is the native uh, version of Gay Feather. Um, but gay feather is another one that is a great butterfly plant. Um, and I've well, got a picture of a butterfly there, but they, <clears throat> they have a place where they can land and they can, they can do their searching for the, for the uh, nectar. And uh, does everybody else know what the blazing star is? The blazing star flower? It looks similar to this, but the flowers are more um, stocky and the, the flower buds are closer together. You usually see them in uh, floral arrangements um, and they come in white or they come in this, this pinky purple color. Um, but they're very, they're a lot, they're not as, uh, this is a, a meadow plant. The, the cultivar version is, is shorter, stockier, fatter, um, but the whole stem is all the pinky purple flowers that the butterflies love. And, and that blooms in the summer. And again, any meadow flowers usually like 
um, dry, depleted soil. You don't want to, if you have a meadow, you don't want to fertilize a meadow. You want to just keep it the crummy soil that it's growing in. It, that's, that's where it's happy. Blue indigo or baptisia. Uh, this one is a big plant. Uh, this one gets about four feet tall by about four feet wide. And um, you better be sure where you want to plant this plant because it has a very deep tap root and once it gets planted if you want to move it it's tough um, but this is a really pretty plant they, it comes in purples yellows whites and then combinations of yellows and purples or yellows and whites and uh, this is a bee plant and this one also likes dry full sun depleted soil <coughs> bluebells this is one of my favorite plants um, this is a woodland plant, a moist woodland plant, and um, this is called an ephemeral, meaning that uh, it'll bloom and have its whole lifespan before the leaves come out on the trees in the woods, um, and then they disappear um, for the rest of the season. Um, this is a, a bee and a fly. Yes? I just want to know, do you have to let that die back on its own yes for it to come yes. back yep. okay yeah because it will it'll just die back and after a while you won't see it but it'll be back the following year because if you leave it all these flowers will produce seeds and it'll just make more seeds and more plants for the following season it's a great woodland tree um but this is mainly this is a mainly a, a bee and a fly plant and um Really pretty plant, but moist woodland. Um, butterfly weed. <clears throat> this this is the dry soil butterfly weed. The um, Asclepius. Uh, I forget the name of it. Is a wet soil one. Gets taller. This one's shorter. This one gets maybe about this tall. And has the bright orange flowers. Dry, sunny, um, depleted soil. Brings in all kinds of butterflies and bees. Monarchs. Yep. Yep. And then the taller one is pink. The the, the native one. Um, the native is milkweed. milkweed. Yep. That likes a um, moist soil in the sun. Same kind of flower and brings in the butterflies. <laughs> Cardinal flower. This is also a um, on the edge woodland moist woodland plant uh, that throws itself around and uh, this is a hummingbird plant hummingbird and butterfly plant um, needs the moist soil and needs to be in shade and in this particular case uh, this plant is here this year next year that plant probably won't be there it'll probably be over here <laughs> or over there or over here um, but it does throw its seeds around and, and spread that way and that gets about anywhere from <coughs> two to four feet tall depending on where, where it's growing columbine um this is a really pretty plant um i don't have a up close and personal picture here but it's it's got a lot of spines in the back of the flower the flower is here coming off the back are the, the little spines but this is a hummingbird um bee plant and this is an earlier bloomer so this is one of the first plants that the hummingbirds come to when they come back from down south um, and this comes in uh, whites and yellows and blues and pinks and little tiny ones up to this big and so this, there's a lot of different kinds of columbines and this one also will throw itself around um, it'll it'll grow in crazy places that you would never think a plant would grow but it's it's a cool plant coneflower this is Here's the landing pad for um, butterflies and bees, and sometimes um, and sometimes flies. I have a lot of different kinds of flies at my house, and a lot of different kinds of bees, all little kinds of tiny ones, and they just crawl all over the cone of the flower. And and again, cone flower. There's white ones and yellow ones and pink ones and short ones and tall ones and. And uh, as long as they have a scent, a lot of the new, we, I've talked about it before, a lot of the new cultivars do not have a scent. 
and um, I've taken them out of my yard because I want I want the bees to come and I want the butterflies to come and that's what they go after. So if they don't have a scent, they're out of my yard. So um, just be careful when you buy them. Make sure they have a scent. Coral bells. Um, coral bells. Uh, I don't have a picture of the flower, but it's a stalk and um, has little bells that hang along that stalk. And there's red ones and pink ones and white ones and tall ones and short ones. And that's another um, bee and a hummingbird plant. This is Autumn Bride. This one gets this big. And the other coral bells that we we're just talking about bloom in the spring and sometimes during the summer. This blooms in the fall. And the flower heads on them are about this big. They're huge. And um, yeah, there's other pictures in, in the other room, but this is a really nice coral bell. But this would be bees, um, butterflies, and flies on this one. Culver's root. Uh, this would be a bee plant and probably a fly plant. Um, there's, there's not much of a, a scent to this plant. Um, this one gets very tall, anywhere from four to six feet tall, and has a, a pinkish purplish flower all the way up the stalk. And this one blooms during the summer. This one needs full sun and dry soil. Boneflower, Tiarella. Uh, this one, Cordifolia, uh, this is the one that um, runs. Um, this prefers a uh, part sun, part shade location, more towards the shade and a little bit more moisture. And with the flower, it's probably about this big. Um, some of them are scented, some of them are not, but this would be a bee and a fly um, plant. And there's, there's Tiarellas that, uh, like I said, this one's a runner. They have ones that are clumpers that just stay as a clump and grow as a clump. Pink flowers, white flowers, that's, that's about your only choices is pink and white, but a very nice um, flower. And some of the leaves uh, usually are variegated with, with red veins and um, it's a very nice plant. Then there's, um, there's Heucarella. There, it's a, a cross between Tigarella and Heucara. And um, so it looks like, it looks more like a Tigarella with all the different kinds of variegated leaves. It's another nice plant that does well in the shade to part, part sun, part shade. Gentian, this is a shade plant and a moist plant. It has to have very moist soil for this to live. And, but I'm pushing it in my yard. Um, it's in the sun um, and it's in drier soil and it does fine. So I like to experiment with plants. So, but to, to have it thrive, it likes moist soil and shade. Um, this is a bee and a fly plant. Goat's beard. Um, this looks like a humongous astilbe. Um, and this gets about six feet tall and blooms in the summer. It has a nice scent to it. And this would be a bee and a fly plant. Um, what else? It needs shade part shade, part sun, and it needs a lot of room because it gets about six feet tall by about five to six feet wide. It's a very big plant. So if you have the room, it's, it's, a, it's a cool plant. <clears throat> and there are some goat's beards that are smaller. They maybe get about four feet. Um, and they, I think they have some that have um, a little bit of a pinkish flower, pinkish purple flower on it too. Goldenrod. Goldenrod is a wonderful bee plant, bees and flies. And uh, the goldenrod, I think I do have fireworks in my yard, um, is just jumping with bees and flies in the fall. Um, it just it just dances and, uh, and they just can't get enough of it. So, and there's all kinds of uh, goldenrods with similar flowers. They could be shorter, uh, they, they wouldn't be fireworky like this, or they could be more, um, just doubled up, but um, it doesn't smell very good, and I think that's that's why the flies like it. So, uh, but it's a great plant for for pollinators. Dry, sunny, depleted soil. 
Indian pink. This is um, a hummingbird and a uh, butterfly plant um, and a bee plant. Hummingbirds come after it because of the red and um, what did you say? And native. And oh yeah, very nice plant. This is a, this is a native plant. Um, this is nice because there's a stem that comes up with about five or six flowers on it. Once this is all done blooming, just cut that stem back and it'll keep blooming for you. Just keep deadheading it and it'll keep blooming, but it's a really pretty plant. It doesn't have much of a scent, um, but it is a, it is a showstopper. Ironweed, another, another native. There's a dwarf version of this that gets about three to four feet tall. And then the native version that gets about five to six feet tall. And this is the whole flower head. The flower heads are about this big with individual flowers on it right here. Great butterfly plant, butterflies and bees and uh, flies. Um, this, this is a really pretty, this, this needs um, normal to moist soil, um, full sun. Joe pie weed. Um, I just added, I just added baby Joe to my list a little while ago. There's a this one gets three to four feet tall. Gateway gets five to six feet tall, and baby Joe gets two to three feet tall. Um, this is a wonderful plant for butterflies. Um, the baby Joe is more um, magenta. Uh, the buds are more magenta, and then it opens up into this this pretty pink. But uh, the ones in my yard, uh, butterflies, bees, and flies. <clears throat> and this is actually a wetland, a moist plant. I've got mine in dry soil and then it's happy. It's, it, this is one of the plants that can run the gamut between moist and dry. How about sun or shade? Sun. The more sun you can give a plant, whether it's a perennial or a shrub, the more flowers you're going to get. So I'm always trying to push it to try to put it in more sun if I can get away with it to get more flowers. Um, the more shade, it's going to cut back on the amount of flowers. Carolina lupin. Um, this looks like uh, regular lupin gets maybe about two to three feet tall. This one gets about three to four feet tall, maybe five feet tall. It's huge but it's pretty. Uh, bright yellow flowers, and uh, this is a bee plant. Bee and sometimes butterflies, if they can maneuver to, to, to land on this, but it's mostly a bee plant. Because um, the bees like to, they love flowers like this that they can crawl into and just kind of get in there and just do their thing, and then they fly out and they're all full of pollen and they go on to the next one. Um, and. Uh, that's, that's, this gets, this gets big tall wise and it also gets big wide. So I'd say four feet wide by six feet tall. Very big plant. Full side, uh, full sun, dry soil. Marsh marigold. This is definitely a wetland plant. Um, mostly part sun to part shade. And this is a fly and bee plant. It's maybe about this tall and you'll always find it right along the water's edge usually around the skunk cabbage area it's in that same that same environment the leaves are good to cook up in or spinach oh really it tastes like spinach oh that's good to know there's the swamp milkweed that's the taller version in the for the wetland um so instead of the orange flowers it has the pink flowers smells very very nice <laughs> and the butterflies just go nuts over this and this will self-sow all over the place. Mm -hmm. This is our native rose mallow. This is um, a moist soil plant. Uh, the flowers on it are about this big. And uh, this is a bee plant. And again, the bee loves to get in there and just do his thing and walk around in there. Um, I've always seen this down at the water's edge. I have not had the chance to try one and experiment with drier soil but this is this is more of a, um, a wet soil plant okay snake root this is a woodland plant edge of the woodland plant um, 
moist soil to normal soil, part sun to part shade, and depending on the cultivar, can go anywhere from this tall to this tall. It gets really big, but it smells wonderful. It has a really nice scent to it. This is a bee and a fly um, plant. And this blooms in the middle of summer, like July and August, sometimes even into September. Um, but it needs room. It needs room, probably a good four feet for width and four to six feet tall in height. If you if you get the native uh, version, which is, this is a picture of the native. They have um, cultivars that have uh, a chocolate colored leaf on it and they're shorter, anywhere from three to four feet tall, but the same kind of flower and the same scent. Skull cap. This is a great um, dry shade uh, ground cover. Um, this one's hard to find. I can't get this one anymore. I wish I had some of this in my yard, but it's it's in the um, mint family, so it spreads. Um, but it's a really pretty plant. And if you were gonna make a guess on what kind of pollinator this would have, what do you think? Bee. Yep, it's got another one of those plant, the flowers that it likes to get in there and crawl around. Um, with the flower, the plant is maybe about this tall. And then once the flower is gone, the, the, the rest of it's maybe about that tall and just kind of crawls all over the place. And I have it, and it's dry shade. It, it, it's, it thrives in dry shade, which is a hard, um, I'm always looking for plants to plant in dry shade. Uh, so this is, this is one of them. Yarrow. There's pink ones and yellow ones and white ones and red ones and orange ones. There's all kinds of yarrow. And this is a great uh, butterfly, mainly butterfly because it's got the wide flower that it can land on, bees and flies. Um, this likes dry soil, full sun, depleted soil, not, not fertile soil. Agastache. Agastache, I've got three Agastache planted right outside my kitchen window. And this, the, the um, hummingbirds come to it, the bees come to it, um, the flies come to it. It's, it's always full of something. And I have, actually I do have, I think I have Tutti Frutti. It's more of a um, orange and pink combination. Um, but this comes, uh, there's one with raspberry flowers, there's one with just orange flowers. Um, great, great plant. About three feet tall by about three feet wide. It needs a lot of room. Dry soil, depleted soil. But this is, this is one of those plants where um, I can go out for hours and just watch all the different types of, of insects that are on this just one plant. And, and the, the hummingbirds that come I don't know how they know it, but they know which flower they went to in the morning, so they know which ones to check at 5.30, and they're right on the dot when they come back. Um, and it's it's just, it's a wonderful plant. And it just gets cut down at the end of the year, and it comes back the following year. And it reseeds. And it reseeds, yes. Sneezeweed. <laughs> this is a nice plant. This is, uh, sometime, most of the time they're orange, uh, but they've got very big cones and this is a great uh, butterfly and uh, bee plant and not much of a scent to it um, so I'm guessing maybe flies on that too it doesn't doesn't have much of a scent but this is a shorter version this gets maybe about 12 to 18 inches tall most of the sneeze weeds are pretty pretty tall about three feet tall but it's a, it's a cute plant this needs um, full sun dry soil Blue mist shrub. God bless you. Delicious Richard. sneeze. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great shrub. This gets about two and a half to about three feet tall by about three feet wide. Blooms in September, anywhere from the end of August through September into October. And mine are always dancing with bees. The whole shrub is just moving with bees. And um, this happens to be dark night. There's ones that are, there's little ones that are maybe about that tall. This one, like I said, is about, about that tall. 
There's shorter ones. There's one with variegated leaves. There's ones with um, a pink flower, um, maybe a little bit lighter purple flower, but this is a great, great bee plant. This is one of many of uh, the bloomish shrubs that we put in that, that garden that I was telling you about that we did a couple years ago. Um, and we, in preparation for doing this garden, we went out and bought bee suits because we were afraid, we were, we were working right near the hives and we never used them. Um, we, I had my head, if this was the hive right here, my head was right here weeding and the bees are coming in and out of the hive. It was, it was fascinating. And, and as the sun shone um, in a certain way, we could see the bees, we could see the path that they were taking. And if we happened to walk right in, in, uh, in the path, bing, yep. we'd get hit. They wouldn't, we wouldn't get stung, but they were just, they were just so focused on getting to that hive that would just pop right off of us. It was fascinating to work there. But we put any, a lot of these plants that you're seeing, that's what we put in there. And, um, and they, they cultivated honey. They had all kinds of stuff in their grass. They didn't have a monoculture of grass. They had violets. They had all kinds of stuff in the grass for all bees. And it was, it was a fun project. But this is, this is an awesome plant. Summer sweet. This one blooms in the summer and can go anywhere from part sun to full sun and from wet feet to dry, dry soil. It's another one of those <laughs> run the whole gamut. Pink flowers, white flowers, tall shrubs, short shrubs, um, bees and butterflies. Very fragrant, very fragrant shrub. <laughs> this um, with the taller versions, there's a, there's a uh, pink one I had in my garden. I needed to move it because it does send up rhizomes and it just, it, if it's happy, it'll, it'll grow wider and I had to take it out and put it in the back where it could do its thing without bothering anybody. But I, the, um, the dwarf versions, I'm not finding that they, they spread like that. So I'll let you know in a couple years because I just started <coughs> using some of the dwarf versions, but a very pretty plant, very, very, very fragrant. And then the fall color is, is yellow. Sweet Spire, <clears throat> little Henry. Um, this is a moist soil plant, um, part shade to part sun. The flowers are about that long, very fragrant. Um, little Henry, hmm, maybe about that big at full, full height. There's a larger version, um, something Henry. Big Henry, might be, I don't know, it's larger, it maybe gets five to six feet tall. Um, and it, it uh, grows by sending out more rhizomes and runners. So it's like the, it's like the summer sweet. So this, this kind of needs some room to grow. And then this is the fall color. It's a red fall color, a bright red fall color. And then the flowers come out in the summer and uh, definitely a bee and a fly no, not a fly, a bee and a butterfly plant. <clears throat> Hydrangea. Depending on the cultivar, there's a lot of cultivars out there that have no scent at all. They have a lot of cultivars that are um, um, infertile flowers that don't even open. Um, so you have to be careful with hydrangeas. But it's, a, it's usually a butterfly and a bee plant. And um, just kind of watch the ones when you go into a nursery and see which ones the butterflies are going after and get that one because it's kind of hard to tell uh, there's so many different cultivars of, of hydrangeas um, and hydrangeas can go from part sun to full sun um, and, and need a little bit more moisture in the soil to uh, make sure they don't uh, kind of droop on you in the summer. Uh, viburnums uh, viburnums, there's all <laughs> kinds of viburnum uh, cultivars, and most of the flowers look like this, where it's a, a big flower made up of all tiny little white flowers. And uh, the, uh, this one in particular does not have a, this is um, Winterthur, doesn't really have that much of a nice scent. So this one's more of a fly uh, pollinator. Some of them do have a very sweet scent to them, 
which would be B and um, B. Shadblow or service berry is a um, bee pollinated, fly pollinated plant. It's one of the uh, first trees or shrubs, large shrubs that grow, uh, that bloom in spring. And um, there's the flower. And let's see, nope, no butterflies because they're not out yet and no hummingbirds. So it's mainly flies and bees. And this is another great bird plant because it produces uh, the berries and uh, you really won't see them because the birds will get them before you really notice them. And then it has a great fall color anywhere from red to purple um, and orange. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's different sizes of these too, anywhere from a large shrub to a large tree. Honeysuckle, the cult cultivated honeysuckles, some of them are really cool with not as long as flowers as this, but um, yellow tubular flowers or pink tubular flowers or combinations of. Um, this happens to be Major Wheeler. This is a native honeysuckle. Um, this would be a, a hummingbird uh, pollinated plant. And um, so anytime you see a tubular shaped, it doesn't have to be this long. This is kind of ridiculous. But anytime it's tubular like that, always think hummingbirds. Most honeysuckles need full sun and normal soil and something to climb on.